Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about meningioma and retinoblastoma. So, meningioma is a benign tumor arising from the meninges. The meninges consists of three layers. The outermost dura mater, the middle arachnoid layer and the innermost pia mater. The pia mater is associated with cerebral cortex. The meningioma is a tumor arising from the meningothelial cells of middle layer, that is the arachnoid layer. It is common in females. These are attached to the dura. The common sites are parasagittal aspect, dura over lateral convexity, the sphenoid wing and also the foramen magnum. The risk factors are prior radiation therapy to head and neck region. Grossly, these are rounded masses with well-defined dural bases since it is a benign tumor and the extension into the overlying bone present. The surface is encapsulated and it may be bosselated or polypoidal. It grows like end plague that is sheet like fashion and has a hyper ostotic changes in the bone. So this right here is the figure as I told it is rounded masses and it has well defined dural bases and it is encapsulated since it is a benign tumor. Right here we can appreciate the parasagittal multilobular meningioma attached to the dura with compression of underlying brain. And there are six most common histological variations based on how it appears in the microscopy, which are syncytial, which means they will be world cluster of cells or the cells will be clumped together. Next one is fibroblastic variant. In this, it will be elongated cells and collagen deposition can be appreciated. Next is transitional variant. It is a combination of both syncytial and fibroblastic. Next is somomatous. Here, calcification of syncytial nest of meningothelial cells are observed. Next is secretory. In this, intracytoplasmic droplets can be seen. Next is microcystic. In this, loose spongy areas can be observed. So these are some of the histological slides and this right here is a squash preparation of meningothelial meningioma showing the typical world formation. And right here it is a meningothelial meningioma with typical intranuclear inclusions. Right here is the fibrous meningioma characterized by parallel fascicles of fibroblastic cells. This one right here is somomatous meningioma with numerous calcified somoma bodies and inconspicuous meningothelial component. And right here is the microcystic meningioma characterized by intercellular microcystic spaces. This is nothing but the secretory meningioma with numerous PAS positive pseudomoma bodies rich in glycogen. Right here is the papillary meningioma with papillary pattern or finger like projection pattern on a collagenous stroma. This is an atypical meningioma with frequent mitosis despite bland cytogenic features. Right here is anaplastic meningioma with sarcoma like cytology and markedly elevated mitotic index. So, 
atypical meningioma. The atypical meningioma is a grade 2 type of tumor. That is, they recur and they show aggressive growth. And they require radiation therapy in addition to surgery. Four or more mitosis per 10 high power fields or at least three atypical features are shown. That is, increased cellularity, small cells with a high nucleocytoplasmic ratio, prominent nucleoli, patternless growth or necrosis. In case of anaplastic meningioma, these comes under grade 3 type of tumors. That is, they are highly aggressive and the mitosis is greater than 20 by 10 high power fields. Now let's check the molecular genetics. This occur due to loss of chromosome 22 maybe with the gene NF2 type that is neurofibromatosis Merlin and they show slow growing tumor and it has vague non-localizing symptoms and also they are solitary and sometimes in association with NF2 gene and they express progesterone receptors so it grow more rapidly during pregnancy period. So this is nothing but the WHO grade and these are the tumors and the most common meningiomas comes under grade 1 and as we have told the atypical meningioma comes under grade 2 and the anaplastic meningioma comes under grade 3. Now let's move on to retinoblastoma. It is the most common primary intraocular malignancy of children. The cell of origin of retinoblastoma is a neuronal progenitor. In approximately 40% of cases, retinoblastoma occurs in individuals who inherit a germline mutation of one RB allele. Retinoblastoma arises when the retinal progenitor suffers a second somatic mutation and the RB gene function is lost. In the sporadic cases, both RB alleles are lost by somatic mutations. Trilateral retinoblastoma These are retinoblastomas arising in the context of germline mutations and are often bilateral. In addition, they may be associated with penialoblastoma that is trilateral retinoblastoma which is associated with a dismal outcome. Microscopy Tumors may contain both undifferentiated and differentiated elements. In undifferentiated elements, there will be collections of small round cells with hyperchromatic nuclei. In well differentiated elements, there are flexor winter stainer rosettes and fluorets reflecting photoreceptor differentiation. And the degree of tumor differentiation does not appear to be associated with the prognosis. Focal zones of dystrophic calcifications are characteristic. So here this is an eyeball and we here we can appreciate the intraocular vitreous cavity with the tumor. And right here it is the microscopic view and small blue round cells and tumor cells are seen around the empty space. So this is an example of Flexor winter stainer rosette. Since rosettes are very important, let's learn about the four types of important rosettes. This one right here is the true ependymal rosettes. And here you can see the central lumen that is empty. This one here is the perivascular pseudo rosette. In this, the cell process radiates around the central vessel and some of the examples of perivascular pseudorosettes are ependymoma, 
central neurocytoma and also glioblastoma. And this is Flexner Winterstainer Rosset. And in this we can appreciate the central lumen with short cytoplasmic process. The examples are the one we have just studied, the retinoblastoma and also medulloepithelioma. This one right here is the Homer Wright Rosset. In this, the central lumen will be seen with neutrophil, like a fiber meshwork. Examples of Homer Wright Rosset is neuroblastoma, medulloblastoma and also pineoblastoma. Prognosis Retinoblastoma tends to spread to the brain and bone marrow and seldom disseminates to the lungs. Prognosis is adversely affected by extraocular extension and invasion along with optic nerve and by choroidal invasion. Hope you have understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.